Hello, and welcome to Indie Encounter. My name is Mark Wilson Jordan. The mission of our show is to give independent performers and artists access to as wide an audience as possible and to give you, our viewers, a window into their art, their artistic process, and why they have chosen their particular avenue to connect with the world. All art is about communication and connection. Let's meet today's indie artist, poetess Sandra Lorraine Coleman. Sandra, welcome to Indie Encounter. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Always <laughs> a pleasure. I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, today, we're going to be looking at your poetry uh, over the entire arc of your writing career, adult writing career. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would say maybe like in the last ten years. Okay. The last. That's my better stuff. So we're digging into the archives and uh, yes. some of the stuff you've been you've performed before. Yes. Uh, some of it's published. Some of it's published, and then there's a few newer pieces in. And remind us the name of the book. The name of the book is "There Ain't Nothing to Do But Breathe," and it's available on Lulu.com. L U L U dot com. com. Yes. Okay. So if people hear something uh, today that they particularly like, it may be there. Um, yes. And they can search it out. They can search it out, or it may be coming because I have a another book that's ready to go. It's just that I need to be able to not have homework <laughs> and finish the process of uploading it. So. Well, you you may have that window of opportunity pretty soon, right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, since you brought several pieces today, mm -hmm. why don't we jump right in, okay. and uh, you may want to set up the piece, and then if you want to talk about it after, we can uh, do that. Okay, definitely. The first piece is called Some Sisters, and I wrote it because I wanted to celebrate who we are and the difficulty that we have sometimes that people don't get to see, but we know it's there. Everybody else might not know it's there. So, Some Sisters. Some sisters is good at masquerading, making life look easy when it ain't. Losing out on luxuries cause she too busy with necessities. Spending most days chasing paper that revolts like runaway slaves to keep from getting caught in her grasp. Some sisters be skilled self-healers, making open wounds look painless when they ain't. Standing on front lines, shuffling, scuffling, scrapping till even soft sighs become battles. But she down for the struggle, forever fearless, fighting for her right to just be, using memories of middle passage misery for strength. Some sisters be great pretenders, making relationship look real when it ain't, holding on to simulated love by fingernails, wind sucked right out her sails. Letting bygones go while pity parties alone. She got to pick up pieces, pull it together, and keep moving on. Some sisters be working miracles, making rags look rich when they ain't. Knowing how to tie cloth so it clings just right and keeps her soul from seeping out. Her philosophy, squeeze pennies till they scream and don't buy it if it ain't on sale. Hell, all a sister needs is a few dollars and a plan can feed family for a week. Some sisters is even experts at cheating death. Wandering through valley with shadow, knowing only reason she's still breathing because she can't find enough time to lay down and die. Mm. So I, I hear uh, adversity. Yes. But I also hear strength yes. and the will to, to go on in yeah. the face of that adversity. Yeah, definitely. And that's what I see when I look at my ancestors, the women um, in my past, the women in my present, and of course the women in my future. I'm raising my daughter, you know, to be, to continue, to go on no matter what, because we have to. We have to. We have to for those coming behind us. The ones before us did it for us. So who am I not to? But it's just that since I'm living it and I see it lived every day, and a lot of people see it too, but they just don't know what they're looking at. Mm 
So they may perceive it one way, but this is what it is. This is the reality of what they're seeing. And you're giving voice to that. Yes. You're reminding yourself, yes. but you're also reminding others yes. and providing others for that window right. into that possibility right. and experience. Exactly, because I know women that do take a piece of cloth and tie it around them, and you wouldn't know it was just a you know, piece of material because it's not that they took the material and wrapped it around them, it's what they did with it. You know, you can make a sheet, you know, look like a ball gown if you know what to do. Well, their own so, particular creativity. Yes, and, and the whole life, that's what life is about though, creativity. You know, how you create being who you are. So this is what I'm doing. I'm letting people know we're, we're very creative. We have created an illusion. <laughs> So I'm kind of letting people know that this is what goes on behind the illusion, behind what you see. There is a reality that, there is a reality. that can be wrapped in that illusion. Yeah, sometimes okay. it's painful, you know, and like, like the last part, I really liked it because sometimes we go so much and we don't realize how tired we are. You know, it's like I had this thought in my head one day. Why don't you just, you know how people say, why don't you just go somewhere and die? And I just heard a lady saying, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> so, well, it's time to die. Well, like, there, there wow. Is a, there's a spiritual. There's, ain't got time to die. Ain't got time. Nope. It's taking all of my time. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Living is taking all. So who have time? You know, I'm too busy trying to live. <laughs> Good. <laughs> right? And spirit. Yes. And determination. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Very definitely. nice. Thank Impressive. you. Impressive. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And a lot of times, you know, as a writer, when you write, it's not so much that you're, you're giving voice to a lot of these feelings and things that you see and stuff like that, and that you like it or love it, that's wonderful. But really, that's not what I'm writing it for. This is my therapy. You know, this helps me to cope with all of those things that I write about. This is how I deal with them. I put them down on paper so you can see what I see. And hopefully you'll appreciate it. We do. Yeah, thank you. That's a big plus. All right. You know. The next piece. The next piece. The next piece is I was on the train and I heard this young mother speaking to her son. And so I wanted to say something, but I didn't. So what I did was I was writing. And then when I went home, I put what I was feeling in a poem. So, it's called By His Rightful Name. Somewhere between two and three years of age, he'll grow accustomed to wearing misfitted moniker as juvenile mother hurls hateful term like big bloodshot bricks aimed straight at son's unprotected head. Sit your down as if she strung him to be swung like some southern strange fruit because her circle consists of itches, holes, no good Negroes, Sour seeds that social her soil, slinging inward like crack all over his baby boy black on a train full of folks hit just as hard by her too heavy to hold, too hurtful to handle defamation, defiling his defenseless young. We sitting scarred and stunned, no warning, no refuge, no time to run, hide, duck, dodge, weave, bob out of the way. We all effed up from her loud left lingering. Honey, how does this libel label factor into your fruit don't fall far from figuring? Is inward reference to son how you see daddy or self? We weary travelers can't pretend we didn't hear. Snapping verbal whip lashing his little bit of living, letting your distorted view smite his small. Baby's barely speaking and this profane name will frame his formative years. Daughter, you must picture perfection in your pint-sized soldier. Speak love to your tiny warrior and call him accordingly, Ashe. Hmm. Wow. So, <coughs> excuse me. We see these people out in public. Mm -hmm. We think their behavior is inappropriate, mm -hmm. and yet we can't necessarily intrude into their world. Right. Because they may not appreciate it. No. Of course, they, they may turn that, <coughs> that uh, vitriol 
on us. Yeah, because if she's talking to her son like that, imagine what she'll say to you. And this is her blood, you know. Right. And she should gave be precious her, yeah, to her. Exactly. Exactly. And that was my, <coughs> excuse me, that was my whole thing. Like, why would you talk to your child like that? Because two, he was between two or three, and these are his formative years, and this is what he'll remember, you know? He'll go out and say those same things to people. <coughs> well, more likely than not, they won't be the first time that he's been addressed that way, right? and unfortunately not the last time. Right. So with the repetition, it gets bound in. And it's too bad because he probably hears that more often than not. Like, I never heard her once say his name. Mm. That was how she addressed him. And so that was the sad, you know, the sadness. And it hurt me. And so, and people, you know, you could hear people go, you know, you could hear that, you could feel that because he was so small. You know, he was just a kid. He doesn't, but he responded to it. That was even more scary than her saying it, him responding. So he's grown accustomed to that from his mother. Right. Yeah. And, and we can only hope that someone is eventually going to counsel her. Right. That you praise in public. Yes. And you discipline in private. Yes. And that's always the rule of thumb. It is. But when you're maybe 17, 18, or 19, you haven't even come to that realization yet. Even if someone is telling you that, you don't see it that way because your world doesn't consist of that. Because she's still a baby she's herself. She's still a baby herself. Yeah. And she's still rebelling. And she's still trying to find her way. Now she has to find her way and help her son find his way, too. They both might not, you know. And you hate to say it like that, but, but I, I put it in words. So maybe there is some young mother out there that will see it, will read it, will hear it if I do it at a venue, and will understand what I'm saying, not to be critical. That's why the end is structured the way it is, because this is what I heard, this is what I saw. Now let's do this. Let's work on this. Let's call him by his rightful name. You right. Know, and, and have everybody else call him by his rightful name, too. And provide the positive, right. constructive input Absolutely. to develop a well-rounded person. Absolutely, because that's what we want. Our kids don't have a chance if we don't give them the opportunity to be the best that they can be and we have to give them our best if we want them to have if the, we want them to be their best we have to give them our best right yeah. and who knows maybe she'll stumble upon this show maybe so <laughs> <laughs> I start carrying some cars. <laughs> we're, we're on YouTube now hey yes. awesome and, and so uh, when it's rebroadcast she might check it out on the check us out on YouTube nice nice how about a drink yes Thank a little you. little wet your little. <laughs> yeah, because, ooh. <laughs> oh, that's better. That's much better. All right. So, how about another? Yes. Um, this is happens to be one of my favorites because it was a story, actually, that my grandmother told me. And I can't remember. I wish I could remember the woman's name, but it was either her aunt or her great aunt. And it was a story that she had told me. And... I regret that I didn't write down more of the stories that my grandmother told me, but this one I do have, so I'm going to share this. And it's called Waterfall Loving. She had four babies, two dark and two fairly white, waterfall loving them equally, showering the same amount at the same time. She deliberately shoved her secret deep into the shadows, crammed in a rusted tin box buried in a hole under floorboards, banished to the farthest corner of the room. Shh, cause slave quarters ain't got no closets to keep obscurities in. And his late night longings left lesions on their living, her sorrowed soul, their tentless skin. There would be no separating here, not while she drew breath, but worrisome folk always worrying about other folks' woes, 
Why, when theirs needed the most tending? Wasn't it enough she had to live with the dying? And yes, she felt hungry eyes bending questions in her direction, running wicked whispers all up and down her and her colorful blessings. She would just brush their back fence dusting back where it belonged, refusing to give rise to the rumblings. That's how she kept them safe. Didn't matter, black or bright, them was her chilling. They wiggled their way into this world from her womb, and who gave her which was not a subject for discussing, ever. While she spent herself serving and raising, raising and serving masters and youngins. Yes, she had four babies, two dark and two fairly white, and she had the nerve to waterfall love them equally, showering the same amount at the same time. I say, God bless her tenacity. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and a woman in difficult circumstances, mm -hmm. and yet those children were treated in a totally, totally different, different way, way. Yeah. from the, the girl you had observed before. Yeah. And it was a time where she could have easily, easily separated herself from but no and I remember my grandmother saying she wouldn't talk about it and she wouldn't let anybody else talk about it either because it wasn't their business they were all her children and she loved them all the same and it did not matter for her it didn't matter because they were all the fruit of her womb yeah. and I so understand that I do and she was setting an example setting an to example. the rest of us so, yeah. of how to persevere. How to persevere. With adversity. Uh, yeah. yeah and, in the face of it. Mm -hmm. And I remember my grandmother saying that people tried to yeah. ask her, people tried to, but she wouldn't. She refused, you know, because that wasn't the issue. And don't accept her children or not accept her children because... They look different. They're still her children. They're still your family. They're still related to you. They're still in this community. And this is how we operate. And I so appreciated having this particular story. Yeah. I really did. And, you know, in our families now, yes. we have all the colors of the rainbow. Yes, we do. And yes, everybody's do. related to each other, and people are like, huh? Right? How'd that happen? <laughs> Just embrace it. <laughs> That's what I say. Just embrace Just it. Embrace because it. at the end of the day, we're all related anyway. <laughs> right, if you we know, go back far enough. If we go back far enough, we're all related. That's a scary thought. Mm, her name is Lucy. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Impressive. Thank you. So, more. Okay. I have this one. I saw a young lady. She was... I was out walking through a neighborhood. I was going to see a friend, I think, and I saw this young woman and all the stuff that was going on around her. But um, the piece is called I Wish She. And so it's kind of self-explanatory, so I'll just read it. I wish she. I wish she could see what I see, standing all spread eagle-like close to the corner, squirming recklessly away from childhood, throwing a temper throwing a temper tantrum into womanhood, calling the fellas out from behind uncurled curtains, tainted tinted windows, and shadow shades they's wearing. She got peekaboo posture posing for nosy neighbors and passers-by. My, oh my, I wonder if her mama knows she's decorating day like a piece of life-size pre-pornographic art on temporary display in the hood, seductively suggesting something, swinging them keys like she could open something, Purposely positioned to catch something, whether she wants to or not. And they looking whether they want to or not. Blowing lascivious smoke all up her birthright. Watching her wiggle with the indign indignance of a stubborn child. Told too many times to mind your manners, be still, get somewhere and sit down. And she don't. Because stillness would only stir the sting of their frequent visits to her tiny business. Manhandling working her minor like it was major until it becomes an unrecognizable 15-year-old mess. Yes, this whisper of a woman, just a loud talking with mouth and mis mischievous movement, in a designer denim panties, got legs gapped for the gaping, 
a little extra insurance for attention, bought wholesale with her innocence. Girl, go and get your money back and some sense while you at it. And where is your mama? Do she know you standing round like that? I wish she could see what I see. Careful, baby girl, you headed for the lion's lair and he got his mouth wide open. Hmm. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> And it's too many of them, too many of them. And they don't even understand. Somebody is waiting for them to take advantage of them. And they haven't even finished being kids yet. Well, you're seeing them. Yeah. And you're having these observations. Yes. Um, so that means other people are seeing them who may not have their best interests at heart. No, not when they uncurl it. And I saw the curtains being pulled back and I saw the men riding down the street. I saw this, you know, and then I saw the young lady she was talking to who was the total opposite, but nobody was paying attention to her. Mm, so we're that uh, needful of attention that, mm -hmm. that we're willing to, to do these things that mm -hmm. debase us. Yeah. Yeah, and, and probably she thinks that's the only way she can get attention because her shorts were so short. And the key, you know, and she just, she was almost fidgety, couldn't be still. She kept moving. And I'm like, young ladies aren't supposed to move like that, and they're not supposed to be dressed like that. At least that's the way I was raised. So. Mm. Well, times are changing, but unclear that that's ever appropriate right. demeanor. And, you know, in being out in the world, you're providing a window to other people mm -hmm. who didn't ne weren't necessarily there. Right. But even if they have seen people behaving in that way, mm -hmm. because many of us have seen people behaving in, in that and other ways, you've provided a window right. and some language Mm -hmm. on that, that particular picture that you paint mm -hmm. that we might not otherwise have. Right, right. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do, make people aware, because I'm not the person that can go to like the, where the teenagers hang out and stuff. Like I'm not that person to, you know, that's somebody else's job. This part right here, though, I can do. I can help people to see, and maybe the person who needs to be in a teen advisor or a counselor or whatever, they can see this and, and show it to the kids and say, look, this is what people see when they look at you. Right. You know? So, and I have to remember whatever I've been called to do, I need to make sure I do that and do it well, not try to do everything. Because I can't reach everybody, I can't reach every teen. But if I write it down, there's plenty of people that can read my work and they can reach out exactly. to the teens. Because so. this is a way of amplifying right. your experience and your voice. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And giving voice to something that maybe didn't have a voice before. You know, for this young girl who's probably has been. Now, I don't know what happened to her if she was actually abused, but if I put put enough on it to make whoever needs to take action take action, then that's what I'll do. Right. Yeah. So I I'm, I'm do make up stuff, but it may not be her story, but it is some child's story. Because it's an observational thing that you're doing. Right. And, and you're trying right. to tie it back tie into it, yeah. reality. And trying to figure out why she's behaving this way and what is that need for attention, you know. And as long as you're going to be out in the world, mm -hmm. these observations are, are going to present themselves yes. to you. Yes, and when they present themselves to me, I have to write them down. That's another part of the responsibility. You're not supposed to sit on it. You're supposed to write it down. So I've had to pull over, you know, in the car. I've had to find a receipt or something in my purse, you know. Now I keep journals. <laughs> everywhere, but I've had to literally stop what I'm doing and write. I could be in the middle of class. If I get a thought, I got to write it down real quick and then go back to my notes, you know, but if I get a thought, I'm, I have to be obedient to it 
and, and write it down. So because it didn't pop in my head for nothing. For no reason. Right. 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 Well, I'll have to congratulate you on the work so far. Thank you. And encourage you to continue to observe yes. and to write and to speak out and to come back and visit us again. Of course. All right. <laughs> in either chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> This has been Indie Encounter, a journey into the world of the independent creators of art and artistic expression. I want to thank today's guest, Sandra Lorraine Coleman, for sharing her poetic vision and talent with us. If you want to find out more about her, check her out on Facebook or on the web by typing her full name into your internet browser. Check out our website, or YouTube channel at PasadenaMedia.com. You may also check out my website, OneForMark.com, or type my name into your internet browser. Thanks to our director, Lilia F. Gaspar, and crew for making the show possible. Thanks to all of you. We hope to see you here again when we embark on another Indie Encounter. So.